Hi guys, this video here is to help you guys get ready for the final exam. I uh, just wanted to go over through, uh, do this, I was planning on maybe doing maybe four uh, separate videos here and uh, to take you through the process here and get you guys ready to have a lot of success on that exam. Um, so let's get right to it and let's just look at the first question. Okay, so the first question here from a class of 30 students, committee of four students is to be created, how many different committees are possible? So these questions here, as well as the second one, is checking to see if you know the difference between a permutation and a combination. Now with a permutation, the order in which you select those uh, people is important, uh, meaning the first person is being picked first is a little bit different than getting picked uh, fourth. Now, on the other hand, a combination it sets out to uh, figure out how many ways are possible when the order is not important. So which one is it here? Do you think the order that we pick these four people are important or do you think it's not important? Well, if we consider we're making a committee and there's really no distinct difference in the jobs, who cares if you're picked first or if you're picked fourth, you're on that committee. Um, so in this case here, the order is definitely not important. So what we have here is out of 30 people, we're picking four, and because it's a combination, it's 30 choose four, just like that. What you're going to turn to here is fire up that graph and calculator, and we're going to run through a combination here. So from the home screen here, you got to type in the bigger number first, so 30. Hit the math button. Travel over here. Probability. See number three right there. Select that, and out of 30, we're choosing four. And there's our solution there. There's 27,000, over 27,000 ways this can go down. So there we go, we got our final answer here, 27,405. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so looking at number two, find the number of ways a manager and an assistant manager could be chosen from a group of 15 people. Now in this case, does the order that we pick these people matter? Well, yeah, if you're picking a manager and assistant manager from 15 people, there's going to be different responsibilities for being the manager and different responsibilities for the assistant manager. So the order that you pick these people is going to be important. So what we have here this time is a permutation. So taking a page from the last problem we saw here, put the bigger number there, 15. We're doing a permutation. And out of those, how many people are we picking here? One, two. So two people there. Fire, fire, fire up that calculator. So this time, out of 15 people, the math button again, over to probability. Now we want the NPR, and then choose 2. There we have it, 210. So let's go ahead and give that our final answer there, 210 different ways that we could select those, those two people. So to sum up these two kinds of problems here, when is it going to be a combination? When is it going to be a permutation? Um, look for these things, um, clues. Look for these clues when it's a uh, for a combination. When the jobs are the same. When the destination is the same. Or when the rewards are the same. Um, for permutations, it's when the jobs are different or the destination is different or when the rewards are different. Um, going different places, different rewards like cash prizes, things like that. So that's, a, that's about the simplest we can put it in terms of t telling the difference. All right, so now looking at number three, you're going to get some probability questions and some very basic probability uh, questions, so definitely take advantage of them when you see them. So this one here, if you have three blue crayons, ten yellow crayons, eight, uh, six orange crayons, find the probability of selecting a yellow crayon. Trick is there, just simply add up, figure out how many are there are total, so three, th 10, 13, plus 6, you got 19 total crayons there. And out of 19 crayons, the chances that you select a yellow crayon, um, how many yellow crayons do we have here? We got 10 of them. Should be doing this in yellow, but it probably won't show up too well on this screen. So 10 out of 19. Simple probability. Sometimes you might have to look to reduce it. You know, sometimes a fraction can be reduced. Uh, so be on the lookout for that because when you see answer choices on a multiple choice exam like this is going to be, um, all the fractions are going to be reduced. All right, next, looking at four and five, we can kind of package those up as a uh, kind of similar questions here, just looking at the definition between the two and knowing the difference between um, independent events and dependent events. 
um, with independent events, the probability of one event does not affect the probability of the other. So you could string together a, a bunch of events. Uh, and we looked at something like that rem uh, before. Remember the uh, coin flip guy. Remember that? We would see how the odds of uh, flipping that coin and guessing right seven times in a row. Well, it doesn't matter what's going to happen on the sixth time. Um, when he flips that coin, that sixth time probability isn't affected by what happened before it or what's going to happen after it. Um, it's still going to be one out of two every single time when you're, when you're guessing. Now with dependent events, it's just simply the opposite of independent events, where the probability of one of event does affect the probability of the other. It's like trying to guess the probability of these two dice having a sum of greater than greater than eight. Um, having a sum greater than eight, it depends on both these dice having numbers that would work together to be at uh, greater than eight. So one of the uh, the probability of having a sum here definitely depends on these two. So that would be dependent probability, uh, dependent events. All right, next, box and whisker plots. Um, with this particular kind of problem, you're given a set of data right there. Box and whisker plot sets out just to show the spread of the data into uh, something that looks kind of like this. And just to flesh these things out here a little bit, that middle line that we had right there, that was always the median, the middle number of your, uh, of your set of data. And so what you had to do over here is arrange that, that data from least to greatest. So you can see that we've done that right there. And so now we're set to do our box and whisker to find the median. We have to split the distance in between the two numbers, so uh, in between the set of numbers. So if we have eight uh, numbers here, uh, splitting it would put it right there, right? Between the two 14s. And so when you have a median that splits between two numbers, you just have to average two numbers. Averaging those two numbers, simple as adding them together, giving you 28 divided by 2. So then you're back to 14 again. Now these numbers over here, or the end of the box here, that was um, your lower quartile, your first quartile. And this over here was your third quartile, your upper quartile. And all you had to do here was just simply find the median of these two halves that you just had here. So on this lower half, median would split right there between these two numbers. So you have to average 10 and 11, and halfway between 10 and 11 is 10.5. Doing the same thing over here, we are halfway between 15 and 18. So when you add those up, that's going to make, what, 33? Cutting 33 and a half, uh, 33 and a half, you get 16.5, 16 and a half. These marks right out here, that's the minimum, the smallest number in the set, so obviously that'd be 19, uh, 9. And then the max right here, the biggest number in your set, there it is. So you can see kind of what we fleshed out there was your box and whisker. And so all that we need to do now is just put this baby on a number line. All right, so there's our number line. Let's put some of this data together here. Let's start with that median. That median was right there at uh, 14, right? So just put a vertical line floating above that. We had another, uh, the lower quartile, Q1, was right here at 10.5, so 10 and a half would be right there. Upper quartile, 16 and a half, which would be right there. And what you see right there is the box. Let's make the whiskers, 9, right there, and then over here, 19. Boom. Nice looking box and whisker. Huh. Whoa. Oh, ho, ho. An even better looking box and whisker. Got me. All right, now let's finish with this one here. So number seven, suppose an automobile dealer is analyzing a frequency table, identifying the number of vehicles uh, of each color sold during the last four months, which measure of data describes the most popular color. Um, the measure of data, what they're talking about, is your three measures of central tendency. And those are mean, median, and mode. Uh, let's briefly go over those definitions. Mean means the average, median means the middle, and mode means the most, the thing that occurs the most. So now looking at this here, hmm, going back up to the problem, they want us to figure out what the most popular 
color a vehicle sold is. Hey, there it is. Mode. So that about does it here. We've looked at the first seven questions. Uh, we'll do another video um, for the next seven questions here. Later.